Hey guys, Dark Recycling FPV. Okay, we have finished part one, installing Beta Flight, part two, updating the STM32 drivers, part three, updating the CP2102 drivers. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an example of what happens, uh, what drivers you need to load in the event that you um, brick or crash your flight controller and you need to get back into it and load the firmware, okay? So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna take that original flight controller that we were using, which is this one right here. This is the Dal RC. This used the STM32 drivers, okay? On your flight controller, on some of them, you'll have a button like this one that's right here, okay? And if you press that button, that button will basically like put your uh, put your uh, flight controller into a bootloader mode, which means it's like a basically a back end way of getting into the flight controller and reloading the software to overcome any issues. For example, if you load the wrong for firmware and you it's called bricking and you brick your flight controller, meaning it's not responding anymore, then you need to go into bootloader mode, DFU mode basically, and press that button and then plug in your USB. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna minimize beta flight again. And I guess we can start closing some of these down, okay? And we'll, we'll minimize our web because we're gonna end up back there again. Let's go back to our device manager real quickly. And I'm gonna show you exactly what happens, okay? So we're gonna take our flight controller and I'm gonna press this button, all right? So watch what happens. I'm gonna hold the button down as I plug in my USB cable, okay? Now, if you remember at the beginning, when I would plug this in without the button pressed down, I would have a ports option here, okay? This time I don't. What I have now is something called, uh, right here as you see, STM device and DFU mode, okay? So that means it's an STM chip, which is what we're using, and it's in a DFU mode, which means it's ready to be loaded into Betaflight to, to load the firmware back using a, a basically, a, 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 um, for lack of a better term, so basically a back way into the flight controller to reload the software, okay? So let me show you what this looks like on Betaflight though. On beta flight, we have no driver listed. And this is one of the biggest things I hear from people is, hey, I've bricked my flight controller and I cannot get into it. And this actually applies towards the, the radios that you'll use, the, the, like the Free Sky or, or any other TX-16, the Radio Master or the Jumper, the Jumper radios. It applies into a lot of things. So you need to put it in a bootloader mode. So here's what you have to do for that. If you look on the beta flight page, it tells you the latest Zadig Windows USB drivers can be downloaded here. Now, if you click this, you will actually be taken to the Zadig website where you can download. Now, I've already included these on our website just to make it faster for you. If you go back down to our software links, okay, and you go right here to Zadig USB, if you click that, or you could click the beta flight one, you're gonna get to their page right here and watch. Right here, you're gonna wanna download this file, Zadig 2.5, so just click it. And uh, what is this? I don't know, this is an ad. I don't need an advertisement. This is new, I don't remember ever seeing an ad, but here's the download that's happening. This, this must be a new way to generate some revenue for them, I guess, which I respect. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to um, wait for this download to complete, okay? And it looks like it's almost done. So I'm gonna go to the, uh, there it goes, now it's done. I'm gonna left click on the arrow and click show in finder. Okay, and at the same time now, I'm gonna go ahead and close the browser because I'm pretty much done with it. So let me close the internet browser and I clicked on the show in folder, whoops, sorry, which is right here. And as you can see in my downloads folder, there's that Zadig file. I'm gonna right click on it, left click on cut, double click on the drone files, right click and left click on paste. Here's my Zadig and I'm gonna now create a new folder called they dig, and I'll just call it. Uh, whoops, 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 whoops. I think my screen just went blank. Sorry about that, guys. A little glitch there. I was in the wrong keyboard. So, so let me get back to that. I'm going to uh, right-click on the new folder, and I'm going to rename it, and I'm just going to call it Zadig Drivers. Okay. And what we're going to do there is we're going to take our Zadig and we're just going to drop it right in that folder. Okay. Now pay attention to what happens. I'm going to leave this right here. We're going to double-click, and we're going to double-click the file. And you're gonna get this uh, option here, click yes. And you're gonna end up with this little pop-up that's gonna come up here and allow you to run their software. And here's how you're gonna do it. Here's your dialog box here. First thing you're gonna do is go to options and you're gonna click list all devices. From there, you're gonna drop down and you're gonna find that STM32 bootloader, okay? And you're gonna click that. At that point, you're gonna click replace driver. And just, if you click it and you don't see anything happen, don't worry about it, it's working. Just let it sit, but as long as you're sure you clicked it, just wait, okay? And we're gonna see what happens. See, automatically started. It's installing the driver that you need. 
Now watch what happens. It should create, I believe, another section, a USB serial bus section. Let me, sh let me see what happens. We're gonna, see how you have another one now? And right there is your STM32 bootloader. So it says it was successfully installed. You can click close and you can click the X to close this. And now let's go ahead and go back to our beta flight, okay? And here's what we're gonna do. We're going to unplug our controller, okay? We are going to hold down our DFU button again, and we're gonna plug this back in. Let me make sure that my device manager, I like to watch when it gets plugged in. <clears throat> okay, first thing I'm gonna do, let me just plug it in regular, make sure our regular driver is working. So we're looking for the COM port which would be, should be popping up right about here, and there it is. Okay, so we know that driver's loading, so now I'm gonna unplug it. I'm gonna hold that boot button. I gotta get my fingers on here. It's not the easiest thing to try to fit this in, but let me just see if I get that going. And now you see in beta flight, see how it says DFU now? That means it's ready to load. So we just managed to get back into that controller now that we've got the right drivers from Zadig, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. In this case, I can now go to update firmware and I'm gonna find that this is a Dal RC. So I'm gonna wait for this drop down menu and we'll go through a lesson on how to update your firmware later. But right now I'm just gonna show you what would happen here. So I'm gonna go and choose board. It says choose board. So I'm gonna go to Dal RC. Okay, and it should be right here, F405. That's what we're using. I'm gonna select full chip erase. I'm gonna click the button here to load the firmware. On, uh, basically, it's loading the firmware from online, okay? And then I'm gonna flash the firmware. And because we have the right drivers, we can see the progression bar working. So if you've bricked your flight controller, right, and you try to plug it in and you don't get a COM port to show up or anything like that, chances are your flight controller is already in a bootloader mode and you need, or your, your flight controller is bricked and you need to put it in bootloader mode the FU mode so that you can load the firmware again. And this is exactly how you do it. So I'm gonna let this finish right now. It'll only take a, a minute or so. And we're gonna, we're gonna actually, as far as Betaflight goes, we're gonna be done with the installation process of the files you need in order to get Betaflight to run properly for you. And I guess it's a blessing that my computer crashed because I would not have been doing this again had I not lost all my files originally. So let's just go ahead and let this load. We're gonna wait. And I'm gonna show you what happens very quickly when you load on the new versions of Betaflight, what happens when you load your firmware. You're gonna get dialog boxes. So watch this right here. See how the DFU is now gone from the top. Okay, it now has a COM port again. And if you go to your device manager, you will see that now your, uh, your bootloader is gone from the bottom and you are back to the STM electronics, which is sitting right here. So now what you can do is you can connect and pay attention to the, what, the message you see. First one is, there's some custom defaults that you wanna load. Do you wanna load, do you wanna load the custom defaults? The answer is yes. So click apply custom defaults. It will restart your flight controller again, okay? And then when you click connect again, you'll get another dialog box with some warnings. For example, there's no motor output protocol selected and the accelerometer is enabled but not calibrated. We're gonna just correct that real quickly just so I can show you what to do. Just click close. The first thing is you will click calibrate accelerometer. That takes care of the second issue that was on the warning at the bottom. The first issue which said no motor protocol, just go to your configuration tab, select, uh, I don't know, for the most common ones, I guess you're gonna go to like DSHOT 600. We'll discuss all of that later, but just to get rid of the errors, you can just go to motor protocol here, change it and click save and reboot. It'll start the flight controller over again. Now when you connect, all your errors are gone and you're back to using your flight controller and you can see it interact. There you go, guys. So what we've done is basically take you from the beginning steps. The next step is gonna to be to um, kind of go over beta flight, I guess, a little bit, but also show you how to load BL Heli, the different versions of BL Heli, and the drivers that you need for that as well. All right, guys, if you have any questions, as always, go to our website, hit us up, or you can check us out on our Facebook page right there at facebook.com forward slash groups, forward slash cycle1fpv. Join our group there and you can chat and, uh, and share messages with everybody else. I'm sorry, I'm looking so dirty. It is a Heavy, heavy day today with a lot of moving to our new facility, so I apologize for that. And as always, please, 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 please subscribe to our YouTube channel it's just, just for your support. It's a great thing. And as always, guys, God bless, be safe, and most of all, uh, go spend time with your family. I do want to say shout-out to my kids, Ashton, Lennon, and Jaden. Love you guys, miss you guys. We'll see you in a couple days. And for the rest of you guys, go spend time with your family. You can always fly later. You never know how much time you have with them, so go make the most of it, okay? God bless, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.